Hello my dear students, my name is Sachin Zado, founder of Fundamental Pharmacy, author of Fundamentals of GPAT, Niper, DI, Pharmacist Volume 1, GPAT Tracker Achiever MCQ book and few more books welcomes you in this YouTube video session. If you are new on our channel, please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you will never miss any video from me. My dear students, in this video we are going to see again, we are going to see pharmacology pinpoints. We have already completed few videos on pharmacology pinpoints and pharmacognosy pinpoints. If anybody has not seen those videos, please go and watch those videos also. Friends, in this video we are going to see particularly the receptors related terminology and types of antagonism. And this is very very important for your GPAT, NIPER, Drug Inspector and Government Pharmacy exam. So it's my request to you. Please watch the video until end so that all your doubts will be cleared. What do you mean by receptors first? So you might have heard the term receptor. Receptors are nothing but the protein molecule with functional correlate. Or in your words you can say that receptors are the protein molecule present on the cell membrane or in the cell to which drug will interact and will show or will modify the physiological action. Physiology of cell. Okay? So these are the receptors of nothing but the proteinous molecule to which drug used to bind and modify the cellular function. Okay, that's it. Now you can see in this slide okay, there are four types of receptor. So this region is known as outside cell and this region is known as inside the cell. So this region, so this region is called as outside cell and this region is inside the cell. A inside the cell hai or a outside the cell. Hai. Now what are the different types of receptors present? Now first type of receptor is known as ion channels. First type of receptor is known as ion channels or it is also known as ionotropic receptor. So this kind of receptor that the drug or the ligand, drug or ligand will combine with this kind of receptor and they will change the permeability for the various ions. So outside the cell you have different kind of ions like sodium, potassium, chloride etc etc. Increase or decrease in the permeability to those ions is the function of your ion channels and drug which binds to ion channel will modify the permeability of ions. From the outside cell, outside of the cell, these ions will go inside the cell and will change the inside cell membrane potential. Suppose that it is a neuronal cell and in the inside the neuronal cell there is a negative potential. Now suppose that sodium will go inside. Sodium is a positive cation. So it will go inside and will change the inside potential known as a depolarization. These ion channels function will be modified by the drug and it will cause either depolarization or hyperpolarization and then you will get a cellular effect. Okay, cellular effect. Now another kind of receptors are there known as a G protein coupled receptors. G protein coupled receptor and these are also known as a metabotropic receptors or serpentine receptors. Okay, these all are the same names. Now drug or agonist will combine with the G protein coupled receptor and will cause dissociation of this G protein okay and then there is generation of secondary messenger depending upon the type of G protein involved there are different kind of G protein G stimulatory, G inhibitory, GQ, GS, GI so there is generation of secondary messenger like your cyclic AMP, then uh, diacylglycerol, inositol phosphate 3 and calcium and this secondary messenger will cause protein phosphorylation and then you will get a cellular repeat. So this kind of receptor known as a G protein coupled receptor. Now third kind of receptor or third type of receptor is known as a enzymatic receptor or tyrosine kinase linked receptor or enzyme linked receptor. These receptors are also found on the cell membrane. So G, so whatever ion channels receptor are there, whatever G protein receptor are there, whatever enzyme linked receptors are there, they all are found on the cell membrane. Okay, they are found on the cell membrane, you can see over here. So whatever agonist will bind to an enzymatic receptor or tyrosine kinase linked receptor, so it will cause phosphorylation of protein and then you will get cellular effects. So this kind of receptor are known as an enzymatic receptor. Now fourth type of receptor is nothing but the receptor that regulate the gene transcription or it is known as an intracellular receptor. Ion channels, G protein and enzymatic receptor all are present on the cell membrane. But this kind of receptor or intracellular receptor they are present in the inside the cell. Now inside the cell they may be present in the cytoplasm or they may be present in the 
nucleus okay so this kind of receptor organism this kind of receptor organism cellular receptor or receptor that regulate the gene transcription or intracellular receptor most of the hormonal receptor are of this type agonist or drug will come in this receptor they will interact with the genetic material and they will cause change in the translation the change in the translation protein synthesis and then you will get a cellular effect so these are the different kind of receptor ion channel g protein coupled receptor enzymatic receptor and receptor that regulate the gene transcription we will see it in the detail don't worry so what kind of question they used to us what is the synonym what is what are the secondary messenger what is a tertiary messenger i think they will give you the example and they will ask you to identify the type of receptor so i have listed over here main types of receptor already they ask a lot of time lot of time question on this slide do this table by heart here type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 receptor and their class okay class location effector cell coupling uh, examples of receptor and then secondary messenger so type first receptor they are known as a ionotropic receptor or ion channel link ion channel link receptor they are also known as ligand gated ion channels now type first or ion channels they are located on the cell membrane where is the location cell membrane now effector cone what is the effector so it is nothing but a channel they will change the permeability to the various kind of ions okay? now, coupling of that receptor with the ion they are direct coupling what are the examples of ion channel receptor for example nicotinic acetylcholine receptor that means ac acetylcholine receptor nicotinic acetylcholine receptor then uh, gaba a receptor then glycine receptor these receptors are the examples of ion channels secondary messenger is none that means in case of ion channels there is no any secondary messenger involved there is a direct coupling and remember one more thing ion channels they act in a few millisecond so they are the fastest acting receptors so any drug that will combine with the ion channel the action will be in a few milliseconds so remember this this was also question asked in the gpet now second type of receptor they are known as a metabotropic receptor or g protein coupled receptor or heptahedral receptor or serpentine receptor all these are the same names remember the same names metabotropic protein Uh, metabotropic receptor or g protein coupled receptor or heptahedral receptor or serpentine receptor now again this g protein coupled receptor they are also found on the they are also found on the cell membrane and effector is nothing but the enzymes or channels now effector is nothing but the enzyme or channel but how so now this g protein there are three type alpha beta and gamma there are three sub unit of g protein alpha beta and gamma they are joined together and whenever agonist will combine with that g protein it will be dissociated and the alpha sub unit of g protein receptor will dissociate it and it will go and it will interact with either g stimulatory protein g inhibitory protein or g q protein okay gq gs gi there are three kind of protein okay and then if it is g stimulatory it will uh, it will affect it will generate secondary messenger and then it will act on a very sensitive if g inhibitory is there okay it will also again act on a uh, ion channel g q is there it will again act on a enzymes so like that that's why effector is a enzyme or ion channel then coupling of this receptor is with a g protein remember what are the examples of g protein coupled receptor so muscarinic acetylcholine receptor then thyroid hormone receptor then uh, this uh, histamine 2 receptor then beta adrenal receptor beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 etc so all these are the g protein coupled receptor alpha receptor beta receptor g protein coupled receptor okay now secondary messenger so cyclic amp cyclic gmp again two more are here cyclic amp cyclic gmp then inositol 3 phosphate ip3 ip3 dag diacylglycerol is also secondary messenger and remember cmp cyclic gmp cyclic amp ip3 then dag these are the four secondary messenger now calcium is also there and calcium is known as a tertiary messenger okay so they might ask a question on this what is the tertiary messenger so calcium is known as a tertiary messenger cyclic amp cyclic gmp diacylglycerol that is dag inositol 3 phosphate ip3 is known as a secondary messenger secondary messenger ko nahi yaad rakho isko cyclic gmp cyclic amp 
IP3 and DAG. They have already asked the question on this. GPAD may already question asked by one of the following is not a secondary messenger. They will give you the example of this. C. Calcium is a tertiary messenger. Third type of receptor is known as a kinase linked receptor or enzyme receptor, or enzymatic receptor. Kinase linked or enzymatic receptor. A tyrosine kinase linked receptor. Now, these kind of receptors are also, also present in the on the cell membrane. Okay, and they are directly linked with the enzyme. So directly or indirectly linked with the enzyme. So, coupling is direct or indirect. Now insulin, growth hormone, growth factor receptor, cytokinin receptor. So these are the examples of type 3 or enzyme receptor. So insulin receptor, growth factor receptor, cytokinin receptor, all these are the examples of type 3 or kinase linked receptor. Here is there is no generation of secondary messenger over here. Okay. Again, type 4 receptor, they are known as a nuclear receptors or intracellular receptors or receptor that regulate the gene transcription remember the synonyms okay again this kind of receptor are present on the either in the cytosol of cell or in the nucleus of cell that's why they are known as the intracellular receptor type 4 intracellular q because they are present in the cell either in the cytosol part of cell or in the nucleus part of cell okay now they they bring about their action by interacting with the genetic material they causes gene transcription act via your genetic material that is dna rna okay for example steroid and thyroid hormone receptor they are the type of intracellular receptor remember the examples also and there is no generation of any secondary metabolite okay so they may ask you either direct question like what if uh, type 2 receptor is also known as type 1 type 1 receptor is also known as type 3 is also known as like they may ask you direct question or they may ask you examples what are what what are the example of type 1 receptor what are the examples of metabotropic receptor or they may ask you the question like match the following type for example in the one column they will give you type of receptor type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 and in the second column they will give you the examples like this one. Okay. or in the first column they will give you type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 receptor in the second column they will give you their synonyms they will ask you question on secondary messenger so what are the secondary messenger remember cyclic amp cyclic gmp diacyl glycerol dhe then ip3 these are the secondary messengers and calcium is known as a tertiary messenger okay so is ke upar kabhi bar question pucha gaya hai ye chart ke upar ye chart aapko by heart hona hi chahiye this chart is present in the my book and it is not present in any book it is a hybrid chart it is a modified chart okay this is how ion channel will act now you can see ligand or drug drug will combine with the ion channel receptor ligand gated ion channel and it will increase the permeability so you can see in this image the ion channel is closed over there okay whenever this ligand will attach to ion channel or drug will attach to ion channel so there is an opening of ion channel and there is a movement of ions from extracellular to intracellular so that can cause either depolarization or hyperpolarization okay so if cations go on inside the cell there is a depolarization and if anions go inside the cell there is a hyperpolarization depolarization result in the initiation of impulse or positive response and hyperpolarization result in the stoppage of impulse or negative response then uh, again you can see over here mechanically gated mechanically gated channel closed and after uh, combining the drug this channel opens and ions go inside this so second type of receptor is nothing but the g protein coupled receptor how they will act now a drug will combine with the g protein receptor drug plus receptor is equal to drug receptor complex so receptor ligand complex okay. drug will combine with the g protein receptor and they will activate it now this g protein are of three type first one is g yes you can say g stimulatory g i g inhibitory and g q okay these are the again different type. this is also stimulatory in nature g q is also stimulatory in nature g stimulatory is stimulatory in nature and g i is inhibitory in nature remember now drug combines with the your g protein coupled receptor and activate the g stimulatory protein how see i have told you g protein coupled receptor they are coupled with the g protein and it is made up of three units alpha beta and gamma so whenever drug will combine with the g protein there will be dissociation of alpha beta and gamma and alpha will separate alpha will activate either g stimulatory g inhibitory or g q okay now if alpha activate g stimulatory that leads to activation of g protein and that causes activation of adenyl cyclase enzyme adenyl cyclase enzyme 
that ideally cyclic is convert ATP into cyclic AMP and increase the cyclic AMP inside the cell causes protein kinase activation and phosphorylation of protein kinase and then you will get the effect mostly positive effect because it is stimulatory in nature so if drug combines with the G protein and activate the G inhibitory protein so G inhibitory protein they are not having any secondary messenger they will directly attach to a ion channel and they will open the potassium ion channel and causes hyperpolarization and they will be known as a inhibitory effect so mostly cardiac ion channel they are associated with the G inhibitory protein now GQ protein they will be activated by drug and uh, it will activate the phospholipase C enzyme and this phospholipase C will break down IP2 into IP3 inositol phosphate 3 and diacylglycerol and calcium okay. now all these three IP3 diacylglycerol and calcium inositol phosphate 3 diacylglycerol and calcium because protein kinase will activate the protein kinase and then you will get a cellular repeat for example acylcholine receptor and ovst one c receptor they are of g protein codes so ion channel we have seen in the detail g protein we have seen in the detail now we will see the enzyme linked to receptor or tyrosine kinase linked receptor so they are also present on the cell membrane so extra extracellular domain of the receptor for example insulin will go and interact with the tyrosine kinase receptor and there is a phosphorylation of receptor and the activation of tyrosine kinase that is serine kinase and gonadine kinase guanidine kinase so entry of that leads to entry of glucose from extracellular fluid to intracellular fluid that is insulin receptor the example is insulin receptor present on the platelet that are the type of your tyrosine kinase type of receptor so that's how they act now next one is the intracellular receptor so drug will combine with the receptor drug receptor complex or drug ligand complex drug receptor complex or drug ligand complex it will go inside the cell it will attach to a specific responsive element of dna dna ko jaake attach hoga and it will bring about the changes in the dna formation of enzyme structural protein gene expression jaise dna mein change hoga uska to rna mein bhi change hoga aur uske baad mein protein mein change hoga so formation of enzyme structural protein gene expression for example estrogen progesterone and androgen they will act on a intracellular receptor now i will explain the terms to you what do you mean by agonist what do you mean by partial agonist what do you mean by inverse agonist what do you mean by antagonist already they have asked a lot of question on this so it's need it's your it is very important you need to understand this so important terms to understand the receptor interaction so what do you mean by agonist agonist is any kind of drug or chemical that will interact with the receptor and it will stimulate the receptor and it will show pharmacological action okay so it will bind to a receptor and initiate the pharmacological action remember it is known as a full agonist and it will produce full action for example benzodiazepine receptors so it will have full action okay so this kind of agonist they have a high affinity and high intrinsic activity what do you mean by affinity affinity is nothing but the capacity capacity of drug to combine with the receptor is nothing but the affinity now what do you mean by intrinsic activity intrinsic activity is nothing but the pharmacological activity after combining with the receptor so full agonist will have high affinity high intrinsic activity for example diazepam on benzodiazepine receptors now what do you mean by partial agonist partial agonist these are also a drug that will also combine with the receptor but will produce less pharmacological activity or sub maximal effect it is known as sub maximal effect so they have equal or less affinity than pure agonist but they have definitely less pharmacological activity or less intrinsic activity or known as a sub maximal effect okay so partial agonist they will act they will have a sub maximal activity in absence of agonist agar sirf partial agonist diya hai to wo thodi si activity dikhayega pharmacological activity puri nahi dikhayega theek hai lekin agar aapne agonist diya hai agonist diya hai uske baad mein partial agonist diya that partial agonist will act as a an antagonist for example pindalol is a partial agonist to the beta 1 receptor entazosin is a partial agonist to mu opioid receptor remember the examples are very important so this pindalol is a partial agonist to the beta receptor and if pindalol is alone given that means it will will stimulate the beta 1 receptor okay pindalol if alone is given it will stimulate the beta 1 receptor but adrenaline is given and then pindalol is given 
Then at that time pindural will act as an antagonist. So partial agonist will act as antagonist in presence of full agonist. Remember. Next one is inverse agonist. So this is also a drug or a chemical that can combine with the receptor and produce, produce the pharmacological action. But which is the opposite action as that of the pure agonist. It can also activate the receptor but it will produce opposite action as that of the agonist. For example, beta carbolin is the inverse agonist to the benzodiazepine receptor. Benzodiazepine receptor ka agonist ko ne, jase maan liji diazepam hai. Diazepam agonist hai benzodiazepine receptor ko aur wo kya karega? CNS depression karega by combining with the benzodiazepine receptor. But this beta carbolin is an inverse agonist and it will also combine with the benzodiazepine receptor but it will produce CNS stimulation. So opposite action. Okay. Inverse agonist will have opposite action with that of the agonist okay so antagonist means what antagonist means it is, it is again a drug that will combine with the receptor but will not produce any pharmacological action and it will cause the cause receptor blockage so antagonist has the same affinity as that of the agonist but have poor or no intrinsic activity example atropine is antagonist to the connect receptor lomazenil is antagonist to the benzodiazepine receptor so these terms are very very important you should know these terms full agonist will combine with the receptor and will produce a full pharmacological action okay partial agonist will combine with the receptor and will produce only sub maximal effect or only partial effect that's why it is known as a partial agonist right now partial agonist will act as an antagonist in case of full agonist in presence of full agonist partial agonist will act as an antagonist okay. and next one is a inverse agonist inverse agonist that means that will also combine with the receptor and will produce opposite action to that of the agonist. Antagonist means it will block the receptor. Okay. Now we will see the next. You can see the same thing using diagrammatic representation. So we see on y axis response and x axis concentration. And uh, this dotted line is nothing but the basal activity. The dotted line. So what is mean by full agonist? Full agonist will combine with the receptor, will produce full pharmacological effect. Partial agonist means it will also combine with the receptor it will produce less pharmacological effect or partial pharmacological effect or sub-maximal effect. Now antagonist it will also combine with the receptor and it will also produce blockage to the receptor. It will not produce any kind of pharmacological effect. It will cause receptor block. Inverse agonist will combine with the receptor and it will, cause, it will produce opposite action to that of the full agonist. Full agonist ko action full rega pharmacological partial ko kam rahega. Partial agonist will act as an antagonist in presence of full agonist. Remember, antagonist will cause receptor blockage and inverse agonist will produce opposite action to that of the full agonist. Okay. Okay. You see over here. Now we will see the what mean by what you mean by potency, what you mean by antagonism. Okay. So suppose that if you plot a percentage response on y axis and a log dose of drug on x axis. Percentage response on y axis log dose on x axis now you have three three drugs this one is the first this one is the second and this one is the, this one is the third and this one is the fourth okay you have four line on this graph okay now first the dose of this drug is going to produce a pharmacological effect is a very less so this drug is called as a more potent drug so if the, the dose of drug is required to produce a particular pharmacological action is very less as compared to other drug then it is known as a more potent drug so if, if the curve shifts from this graph to the left side then that is known as a potentiation as another well second drug it is a full agonist the full agonist will produce a effect and if less amount of drug is required to produce the same effect then that is known as a potentiation and drug is known as more potent the phenomena is known as a potentiation more dose is required to produce the pharmacological action, similar pharmacological action that, that is produced by full agonist then it is known as antagonism. Potentiation will shift log dose towards the left side and antagonism will shift the log dose response curve towards the right side parallelly. So competitive antagonist particularly competitive antagonist will shift the dose response curve. Remember this competitive antagonist will shift the dose response curve towards the right side parallel parallel shift called is called as a parallel shift and non competitive antagonist conist will also shift the curve towards the right side but not parallelly that is the difference because see 
Cognitive antagonist and full agonist will have structural similarity. Agonist and competitive antagonist जो है उनमें structure में similarity होता है और वो उसमें competition होता है जिसका ज्यादा concentration उसका उतना वर्चस्व and non competitive antagonist will not have any structural resemblance to your full agonist that's why it also shifts the dose response curve to the right side but not parallel remember this okay we will see the next types of antagonism it is again very very important and uh, already they have already asked the question a lot of times on this what are the different types of antagonism first one is a physiological uh, first one is a physical antagonism second is a chemical antagonism third is a physiological antagonism fourth one is a pharmacological antagonism now what do you mean by physical antagonism any chemical drug or anything that can antagonize the effect by its physical action then it is known as a physiological antagonism for example char or activated charcoal powder is used in the alkaloid poisoning and it acts by adsorption of alkaloid on the charcoal surface that is there is a physical antagonism now next one is a chemical antagonism so what is chemical antagonism so antagonism due to its chemical bonding for example chelation of metals by edta so you know that in case of iron poisoning diperoxamine is the antidote so diperoxamine will chelate will bond bonds with the iron and uh, will prevent the poisoning so that is known as a chemical antagonism now physiological antagonism physiological antagonism so it is nothing but the antagonism produced by drug acting on different receptors okay when opposite pharmacological action is produced by binding with the different receptor for example example has already asked in the gped exam okay so remember this so adrenaline and histamine these are known as physiological antagonist these are known as physiological antagonist to each other and adrenaline produces bronchodilation by acting on a beta 2 receptor beta receptor is of adrenaline and it will produce bronchodilation but the histamine has its own receptor known as histamine 1 receptor and it causes bronchoconstriction by acting on histamine receptor histamine 1 receptor so that's why two drugs act on their own receptor and produce opposite action that is known as a physiological antagonism okay now last is a pharmacological antagonism so opposite pharmacological effect produced by acting on same receptor दोन ड्रग अगर एक ही रिसेप्टर पे ओवर एक्ट होके अपोजिट एक्शन दिखाते हैं तो उसको बोलेंगे फार्माकोलॉजिकल एंटामोनिज्म अपोजिट फार्माकोलॉजिकल एक्शन बाय बाइंडिंग विद द सेम रिसेप्टर फॉर एग्जांपल अभी देखो यहां पे एग्जांपल क्या होगा जैसे एडेनलिन है आपका एल विल एक्ट ऑन इट्स अल्फा रिसेप्टर मीटर सो एडेनलिन विल इंक्रीज द हार्ट हार्ट रेट एंड फोर्स ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्शन बाय एक्टिंग ऑन बीटा 1 रिसेप्टर ओके नाउ बीटा ब्लॉकर्स लाइक प्रोपानोल एडेनलोल लेबेडोल all these will up the beta 1 receptor and will decrease the heart rate and all that so adrenaline and propranolol adrenaline and bisoprolol adrenaline and timolol adrenaline and pranolol all these are the pharmacological antagonists okay remember this is very important already they have already asked question on this and students if you, if you want such kind of full lectures you can join our gpat naipur 2023 online course here you will get live lectures Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday. Our lectures will also available in our application. Study material will be delivered to your address in the form of hard copy. Online test will also be available. All these included in the eight thousand rupees. You can contact me on this number. We have very much promising result from past few years. Okay, anybody wants the books? Okay, they also contact me on the number. All the content given, whatever content is presented in front of you, is nothing but the content of my book. Thank you very much. for listening me